Hello and welcome back to the S Pro video channel. Today we're going to be continuing on from our previous NVR initial setup video. In that there are a couple of steps in the setup wizard where we advise skipping them for the moment until the system was initialized. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'd advise you to do so now. It will either be linked within this video or in the description box below. And so from this point onwards, we're going to move forward assuming you followed along with that initial setup and you're now ready to configure the basic settings for the system and set up a recording schedule. The NVR will automatically accept the IP camera we've plugged into one of the ports on the back with a Cat5 cable and we're now ready for the rest of the setup. First off, if we go down to camera in the bottom left and click encode, you'll see you have two parts, the mainstream on the left and the substream on the right. This is because with an S Pro system, you can configure the settings of each independently. In essence, the mainstream is what's going to be recorded to the NVR's internal hard drive and the substream shows the settings for accessing the footage remotely via your phone, for example. So you can define the resolution, frame rate and bit rate for each stream here. You'll want to try and strike a balance between recording quality and optimizing for storage. The higher the resolution, the better the image quality, but it will also take up more storage space on your hard drive. You'll need to be conscious of any potential bandwidth limitations and also be aware that generally the busier the scene the cameras are recording, the higher the bitrate will need to be. If it's a quiet scene where there isn't much activity, this can be reduced. It's worth pointing out as well that if you click more, this is where you can enable audio functionality. Click apply to save any changes. And since we've discussed the subject of recording storage, if we now go back to the main menu and go into storage and then record estimate, you'll see the settings you've just defined listed here. And if you enter the total terabyte amount of storage you have, it will calculate how many days recording you can expect before the oldest footage begins to overwrite. Something else you may want to consider at this point, particularly if you're looking to save storage, is to make sure motion detection is enabled, as you may want the system to only record where motion is detected, which we'll show you how to set up in a moment. To do this, you would go back to the main menu, Alarm, and click Video Detection and Enable. If you want to define the motion detection region, you can do so by clicking Settings here. Check out the linked motion detection video if you need to do this. At this point you may wish to define the post record time here. When playing back footage of any events, each video clip recorded will also show some footage from just before and just after the event to give you the necessary context to fully understand what happened. As you can see this is currently set to show 10 seconds after the event. Again click apply to save any changes. Next we'll go to storage and schedule which is where you would set up a recording schedule but also where you would define the pre-record time for the playback of video clips so how many seconds you would see before any event. Now let's look at the schedule itself. By default as you can see every day of the week is filled with a green general bar. This is just standard recording and if set up like it is here for every day all the time would result in constant recording. However, what you may decide to do is only have motion detection on during working hours, for example. And if you want to apply that Monday to Friday, you can click here and copy to all and then remove Saturday and Sunday. You can overlap general and motion, for example. And in this situation, you'd have standard recording, uh, but motion events will be marked on the playback timeline. And so any motion events will be easier to find and click apply. You can also schedule recording for alarm events from a PIR for example or schedule recording for intelligence features like intrusion and tripwires. However these events can be found via the AI search function as well. So hopefully this video in conjunction with the previous NVR initial setup video have answered any questions you might have had about getting your S Pro recorder set up. If you did find it helpful, please like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos from us here at S Pro.